All right, Daniel Lanier here. I'm excited today because I know you guys have seen this on your social media feeds. It's the BlendJet Original Portable Blender. I'm going to unbox it, put it through its paces, and see how good this thing actually is and see if it's something you might want to buy. So it's the BlendJet Original Portable Blender. I'm excited to get in this thing and see how good it works. Daniel Lanier, let's go. All right, let's take a look at what's in the box. So there's not a lot to it, actually. Pretty simple. Got got the blend jet. You got a USB, and this is a USB A to USB C connector, because that's how you're gonna charge it with the USB right here. here it's got some information and we have our instructions that's it that's pretty much it real simple so we're going to go through we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of the blend jet how to operate it all right so let's go through all the components and just kind of break it down so we got our lid which got a little o-ring in here so that's going to help keep everything sealed up it's got a little o-ring little carry strap on there and then you got your cup section right here which actually has measurements on the back so if you're trying to measure you can measure and something i love you can actually take this apart so you can put this in the dishwasher if you have to and if you're trying to clean down in here you can actually take it apart and get right in there which i really like that feature and that's it you got the base and the mechanics and when you're putting this back on it has two little arrows on there you just want to make sure you're lining those arrows up and getting that lined up because that's going to help with your seal around the bottom right here all right and then charging it takes about an hour and a half to fully charge it and then we'll talk about the different lights you'll see in the charging in just a second but all you're going to do is one of your existing things that you have because we have so many now usb charging blocks so you're going to just use one of those it could be for one of your mobile devices or something else you're going to put into this end and plug it in and then this end is just going to go right into the blender so we'll talk about the different lights that you're going to see charging in just a second but that's it that's all the components that's how they go together uh, cleaning it that's how you're going to clean it you're taking the base apart you don't have to take the base apart this is this whole assembly is waterproof but just be careful when you're cleaning we'll talk more about that when you're cleaning with the USB-C but that's it let's go ahead and um, talk about the, the different modes that you have and the charging cycles and stuff like that all right so like I said it takes about an hour and a half to charge it and you're gonna get about 15 plus blends out of that when you charge it okay so if you see the the full blue on that means it's fully charged full blue circle going around if it's blue and purple that means it's half charged and if it's all purple and red that means you need to charge it so just the three cycles going on right there purple and red needs to be charged a zero charge you're gonna need to charge it purple and blue 50 percent all blue it's got a full charge on there okay so if you get flashing red around here so this ring around here so the light ring that you see right there going around if it's flashing red that means that these arrows are not aligned properly you need to align them so it's going to tell you if you don't have this aligned right so you take this base off you go to screw it on and you get flashing red around here you got to align these arrows so that's what that is if you get solid red that means the blades are blocked so maybe one of the food items you have in here is ceasing the blade up and it can't move so solid red blade is stopped blade can't move blinking red means it's not aligned your canister and your base is not aligned all right all right so let's talk about the blend modes because you have two different blend modes here so the first one is just your 20 second regular blend. If I just hit power, it's just gonna go for 20 seconds and stop. Now, if I wanna pulse mode where it's pulsing, what I'm gonna do is double tap the power button and then you're gonna see it 
circulating blue like that. Now it's in pulse mode, so if I hit it, it's just gonna pulse. So every time I hit it, it's gonna stop. So it's just gonna give quick pulse like that if I hit it. To get it out of this mode, you just gotta wait five seconds. You wait five seconds, it's gonna go right back into your regular blending mode, which is the 20 seconds. So if I hit it now, we're right back into blending mode. So those are the two modes you have, regular blend and pulse. All right, so when you're traveling with this, you don't want it to go off by mistake because this could go off by mistake and you don't want that. You want to put your ingredients in here or if you don't, if you want to put your ingredients when you get to your location, you can do that as well. But you don't want this going off accidentally and then draining the battery down. So to lock it, so the power button is locked, what you're going to do is hold it down for three seconds. Green goes around and starts to flash purple. And now it's locked. So if I click on it, nothing's going to happen. And it's going to still flash purple every time it gets pressed. But nothing's going to happen because now it's locked. To get it out of the lock mode, you're going to hold down the power button for three seconds until it turns blue this time. So I'm going to hold it down. Purple goes away. Now it's flashing blue. So now I'm back in regular mode. Hit it, and I'm back blending again. So to lock it down, hold three seconds gonna turn purple there we go now if I hit it not gonna do anything get it out of this mode hold it down this time I wanted to turn blue blue now we're back into regular cycle all right so that's your different blend modes and that's also how you're gonna lock it for traveling all right so one of the things we want to look at was does it fit in the backpack pouch so a lot of backpacks nowadays have like a little water pouch so you can put your water bottles in them and things like that so wanted to see if this would fit so i have this is like my little travel bag right here i use this bag when i go on trips like if i'm walking around the city or whatever i usually have this bag with me water bottle fits in there fine now you can see the blend jet is a little bit bigger than a water bottle a little bit bigger diameter than a water bottle. So I want to see what bags it fits in because that may be something that you're thinking about, you know, putting it in your bag instead of putting it in the inside of your bag, which we know it can fit there, does it fit in the little pouches. So I don't think it's going to fit in this one. You can't, sometimes you just can't force it in. Um, so it doesn't fit in this bag. So this one's a no. I usually have this bag with me a lot. It's good in this one. So no issues in this bag. It's, it's fine in this bag right here. Now something you can do, made me think about it on this bag. You can, if you get a little clip, you can just attach it to a bag too. So that may be an option for some people, just attaching it to a bag. So you could do something like that. A little carabiner clip. And then this is my bag I use most of the time. It's my computer bag. It fits fine in there. So two out of three, not bad. Fits fine in this bag. 100% all right. All right, so that's cool. So yeah, I think for most backpacks, it's gonna fit inside the little pouch if you have a pouch. I mean, you may have some like the first bag, a travel bag that doesn't fit in there. But I'd say for the most part, you're probably gonna be able to fit it in a, in a bag. Like I said, it's not that much bigger than a water bottle as far as the diameter, but you may have a few bags that you can't get it in. Then you can just put it in the uh, inside of the bag. So let's test a couple other things. Let's look at a few other things as far as where this guy fits in, talk about the, the leak, leak protection, and we'll see where we'll go from there. All right, so I'm sure some of you are wondering, does it fit in a cup holder? Yes, it does. Fits in a cup holder just fine. Doesn't go all the way down, but I don't think it'll be a problem with it moving around unless you're maybe driving really, really crazy, maybe. But I think it'll be fine sitting there. It doesn't go all the way down, but it does fit in there, I think secure enough that you won't have any problems with it. It could be all right. So yes, it does fit in the cup holder. All right, so let's test out and see how leak proof this is. So all I did was, I'll take this off. 
want you guys to see how tight I'm actually putting this. And it's not, I'm not putting it on, like cranking it down. It's just, it's like normal tightening. So I just got it on. So I felt it snug up and that's it. And let's see. Get so we got a seal, our seals are going to be the top, obviously, and then we do have a seal in the base because the base unscrews. Uh, you just want to make sure the arrows are lined up when you put the base on, but those are going to be the two places that you could possibly have leaks at is going to be on the base and the lid. And looks good. Let's use, let's give it a little kind of like bag action. If you had it in the bag, like around that. Still nothing. Now I know this is just a quick little test here and I'm just kind of messing around. So when I do a follow-up video, you know, a few months I'll do a follow-up video of my findings, see how it worked, if I had any, uh, any issues or anything like that. But just this little regular, kind of getting on it here a little bit. I'm still not getting any kind of leaks. It's all how it fit in my backpacks, so you can definitely put it on the outside, but if you had to put it inside a bag, looks like it'll be fine in there. I don't see, at least right now, I don't see any problems, but like I said, I'll follow up by get some issues. I'm trying to just kind of simulate it, rolling around in a bag a little bit. This is, again, it's just a quick test, so we'll see over time and make sure we maintain that leak-proof status. But... Seems pretty good right now. I think I feel pretty confident with it inside a bag. I think I'd be okay. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, so to test out the blending, I got some frozen fruits. I have some lemons. I have some walnuts because you can also use this as a processor. So we're gonna see how it does on some walnuts. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna do some, I got some protein powder too, because I wanna see how it does with powders inside the blender, just like any blender. So let's get it going. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is actually just do some ice. So normally when you do any of these things, you're gonna add liquid to them, so it's gonna be a little easier for it to mix, but I wanna see how it does with ice by itself. Some ice in there. Now this is a six point blade, so this should cut pretty good with just using this ice. So we're gonna see how it does, let's go. Now, with any blender, you're gonna get, you're gonna have to mix it up and do stuff like that. I mean, some of the bigger ones, yes, you're probably gonna use that. But like I said, if we have liquid in here, it's gonna help move this ice around to blend. But just from what I'm seeing, it's doing a good job. With the ice going down, let's keep it going. All right, let's add a little water in there and so we can move the ice a little more. I, I feel like it's doing a good job though. It's, it's, I got a lot of crushed ice in there, so it's doing a good job. But let's put a little liquid in there. Oh, you know what that means? So that red means the blade is stuck. So the ice is probably Freeze around water. Oh, I love when stuff like this happens in the demo. It's good. So the blade is stuck. Let's take a let's do some pulses. See if we can get it to move a little better with the pulse. So we'll hold down for three. Purple. Oh wait, double tap, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was a lock mode. There we go. 
All right, so starting off with just ice, I'm gonna say it broke up probably 80% of the ice. Yeah, let's do this. Let me put it in something to see what it looks like. All right, so saying not bad. These are the biggest chunks we have. That's quite a few big chunks there. All right, let's do ice with water at the same time. All right, so this time we're gonna add ice and we're gonna add water. Water. Definitely better than last one. We've got a few chunks. You do just a little bit more. Definitely a lot better. We only had this one. A couple of smaller little chunks, but really this one big chunk. It's just the biggest one right here. So definitely did a much better job this time. Just got the one big chunk right here. Everything else is broke up really good. So let's do some fruit now. All right, we're gonna do a little, let's do, let's do a little blueberry mango smooth. So what I like to do, if I'm doing protein powder, I'll put a little fruit, and I do this in my regular blender. So if I put a little protein powder in, I kind of layer it in with the fruit. So I got some blueberries in there. I'm gonna add some protein powder. Got a little something. Normally I would put a little liquid in the bottom to break up the protein powder. Now I'm gonna have to use my chopstick. My blade, my blade is stuck. So we got 20 seconds of blend. I'm gonna do a couple of pulses here. Doing a good job here, but it's not bringing everything down. And that may be, to be quite honest, it may be because how I set it up. So we can see now this is fresh frozen out of the bag so we can see it's not getting all the fruit and all the mix down 
in this area is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to mix this a little bit more. I'm going to go. We never got to the mangoes. The mangoes are all just chunky in there. So the bottom came out great, but the top part, we didn't get any mix on the top part. So a lot of chunks and stuff on the top. So I'm gonna say that mix didn't go quite as planned. So let's do a little another mix. I'm gonna clean it and then we'll do another little mix. I'm gonna do that last one over. I'm gonna do it like I do in my blender, a normal blender. So I put a little bit of liquid in the bottom. I will say these things have been sitting out for a few minutes, so they're all starting to get softer. Then I'll go This is what I usually do with my blender. This usually helps. A couple things I'm gonna point out. This fir the first test, all this stuff was fresh out the freezer, still really frozen. It's been sitting out for a few minutes now, so everything is kind of softening up. Which when I take my take this to work, because I've taken it to work, I have noticed that everything gets soft by the time I get to work, and then when I turn it on, it blends fine. So let's see what we get. It looks like we're getting pretty nice as far as a good blend going on. All right, so making a smoothie, we still had a few blade lockups. Let's see. Let's see how this one came out. Now we know from the last one, we had a lot of chunks of mango. Mango never got broken down at all. We had some big protein clumps. So let's see this one. This one's a lot better. A lot better. So how you put the mix in there does make a difference. I mean, I do that with my blender that I have now. So it does make a, a difference how you put the mix in there. So I do want you to take that into consideration. But this one mixed up fine. That looks great. I didn't have any chunks at all. And this one, I don't see any protein. I don't hardly see any protein on the walls either. So this one mixed great. So just think about that when you're mixing, how you're putting your ingredients in, because it will make a difference to what comes out. As you can see, night and day difference between this one and the first one. A lot of clumps and everything in that first batch, nothing in this one, and it really boiled down to how I put my ingredients in the blender. So I like how this mix went. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna make, uh, do two more. We're gonna do some lemonade, one of my favorite things to drink. Lemonade, that cool refreshing drink. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna mix up some nuts. Now that was pretty messy as you guys can see. They say just add a little soap and water, turn it on, and it should clean. I think we're gonna have to do a little bit more with this smoothie, but let's see. Okay. All right, so we can see, this is just with soap and water, cleaned up good. I'm just gonna 
went to see it. Looks good. Everything came up pretty good. I didn't even have to use my little tool and get in there, which I probably still will. I still go in there and get just to make sure there's nothing at the bottom. Just gonna do one more little print. Yeah, but just with soap and water, good clean, just like they said. So no issues, no protein powder all stuck on the edges, all that came off. No fruit stuck on the blade. Blades look really good. Cleans up well. One of my favorite things to make lemonade because my great grandmother made the best lemonade. So um, this is just some fresh squeezed lemons. So just lemons. And something I tell people all the time, a blender is not a juicer. So if you're trying to extract the pure juice of something, the blender is not gonna give you just a pure juice. So this is just some lemon, pressed lemons in here. So I got that and we're just gonna add some water, some agave. Now, if you do want a little bit more sour and some pulp, you can take a piece of a lemon and then actually put the whole lemon in there. So we're gonna do that in here. because so my grandmother used to cut up some lemons and actually put the lemons in after she pressed the lemon, lemons. So we're gonna add that. I'm gonna add some water. And the key to this is I want to see how good it mi mixes the agave in here. Now that's my sweetener for this, is the agave. And then what I normally do is I'll pour this over ice because it's going to be really sour. So pouring it over ice, it'll get it to break down and it gets to a point where it just tastes great. All right. So there shouldn't be any problems blending this. You see all that agave at the bottom. I want to see how good it mixes that up. All right, everything looks good. It's got a couple of seeds in there. You can get out of that lemon. That's fine. But it looks great. Now, something cool about this, you can drink right out of this. So if you're on the go and you just take it like this, it could just take on the go. You can just drink right out of it. Or you can pour it in a cup. You can make drinks and just pour it in a cup. So if you're just making drinks for just you, you can just fill this up and pour it. Easy cleanup, small little blender like this. Mmm. -mm. Tastes delicious. All right, so let's... um. We're going to pour this out. Actually, let me pour it in the glass. You can see. Let's see how. Yeah, I don't see any agave residue. I'm trying to keep those seeds right there. Yeah, mix that agave in there really good. I don't see any agave in there. There's none at the bottom, so I don't see any agave residue in here. So it mixed it really good. All right, so I like to make these power bowls, and I like to put fruits in them, oats, agave, protein powder, and nuts. So we're going to see. It says, wow, that's great. It says that it chops up nuts. You can do some food processing. Let's see what kind of job it does. Well. Uh, I don't know about using it to chop up nuts. Smoothies, mixed drinks, Fantastic. I mean, not the, not the worst job, but not the best. It's got a couple of, a couple of them that didn't really get 
crunched up, chopped up, I should say. I mean, not, not a horrible job, but probably wouldn't use it to do the nuts. Probably wouldn't use it for that. But overall, pretty good. All right, so that was it. The blend jet, you know, it worked good. And I have to, I have to tell you guys this. You know, I had, uh, during the video, you guys saw I had a couple of blade jams. Just like you may have in your regular blender. I had a couple blade jams, but I will tell you guys this. I've used it for a few weeks now. And what I do is I put all my ingredients in. I take it to work, put it in the fridge at work. And then lunchtime, I get ready and I go ahead and blend. And everything's kind of ready to go. I've never had a blade jam but putting the things in fresh and frozen, it seems like you can get those blade jams. And also something to think about is how you put your ingredients, just like any blender, how you layer your ingredients up in here is also gonna add to the performance of the blending. But I'd say overall, I actually really like it. I, I think it's a good portable blender. I like to see them come up with some different tops for it though. So you don't necessarily drink out of just this top. So I like to see that. I like that it fits right in my cup holder and my car. So it's pretty cool. It fits in all my bags, so I don't have a problem with it going in pretty much all my book bags. But I like it. The Blendjet Portable Original Blender. I think um, for having something for you to just take to work or take on the go with you just to blend things up. You can make all kind of little blends, different kind of juice blends, stuff like that. You can also do smoothies, things like that. But I think it's great, little portable blender. So far it's working really good. It's been pretty doable on my back, throwing it around. But I would uh, check it out. I would definitely check out the blend jet. It's not that expensive. So definitely something I would think about buying. So this is Daniil Lanier. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. I got more reviews, how to's, DIY, and of course, cool motivation coming at you. I'm gonna go do some blending. I'm out, deuces.